G'day. How are you doing? Hopefully you're doing very well keeping healthy and safe. I am doing absolutely fantastic on this side of this. We're going to have a look into this Asus ZenBook 14X OLED. This is the 2023 model. So it's the UX3404. Now we're going to have a look at some of the features, look at the display and look at the temperature of the fan noise and the internals. And as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to a different section that you may be interested to save you time. Now first off, let's have a look at the specs. Now this houses the 13th gen Intel Core and you can get anywhere between an i5 all the way up to an i9. That's a surprise. Usually they don't go to i9s, you use the i7. So this having an i9, which means the thermals gives you an idea might be pretty good here. Now, as for the memory, it can get have anywhere between 8 to 32 gigs. Now they are soldered to the system board, so make sure you get the correct amount of memory before when you purchase as you can't upgrade it later on. But I would really suggest a bare minimum these days 16 gigs, just as a hint. Now, it does have a slot of M.2 for your storage and you can go all the way up to one terabyte. Now this does have two configuration really that actually for the discrete graphics you can either get it without the discrete graphics or you can get with the discrete graphics and that is the GeForce RTX 3050. Asus has put a gorgeous display on this ZenBook 14X. It's a 14.5 inch 2.8K OLED display. So it has a resolution of 2880 by 1800, which means it's got an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. And it does have a very fast refresh rate of 120 hertz. Now it is rated to 400 nits of brightness or luminance with a peak of 600 nits for HDR. I've got to say, Azusa's OLED implementation has very nice, vibrant colors coming out of these displays. Very nice to look at for photos and videos. It is a glossy finish to the display, but that also adds clarity and also sharpness to this OLED display. Now, despite the actual reflections that inherits from a lot of glossy displays, because of the brightness and the vibrance of this OLED display, I didn't have any issues consuming multimedia and also working on documents in direct sunlight. This may not show up in video, but in person, even with sunglasses on, I really didn't have any issues seeing the display despite all the reflections. Measuring the color gamma coverage of the 2.8K OLED display with a refresh rate of 120 Hertz, it resulted with 100% sRGB coverage, 93.9% Adobe RGB coverage, and 99.1% DCI-P3 coverage. This is extremely high and it is ideal for professional photo and video editing tasks. As for the I.O. ports, it has two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now you can use any of these two ports to charge the laptop. You also have a 3.5 audio combo jack, a full-size HMI, which is version 2.1, and on the other side, it has a USB type A port, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2. The weight of the ZenBook 14X OLED is 1.58 kilos plus the 100 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 1.98 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. There are two speakers located on the bottom front on either side of the laptop. And when I measure the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure in a peak of 88 0.2 decibels. I consider this medium loudness compared to other laptops. You shouldn't have too much issue listening to the speakers while you're outdoors or at a noisy cafe. Now, as for the sound quality of the speakers, it has a nice bass with good reverbs. It is mid-balance with nice loads backing up. It's got very nice clarity and acoustics. Overall, a very happy sounding speakers. The ZenBook 14X has a great working keyboard. It's your typical ZenBook keyboard, no fancy extra bits, just nice, decent keys. Now, these have very good key travel and they have a, a nice, decent size, large keys with very smooth surface to each individual key. I want to make an extra shout out to Aces for actually putting the delete key on the very top right and not making it the power button. Now this is very, probably very useful for people who do a lot of typing. It just makes it easier so you don't have to look and watch out for the power key. The keys are backlit and there are four settings, off, low, medium and high. 
As for the touchpad, it is a large size touchpad. Without being overly large where you may have accidental touches from your palm, I didn't get that. And it is mechanical, so it's hinged at the top and you can depress it as you move down and it has multi-gesture support. It does have a silky smooth texture to the surface so it is very easy for your fingers to glide and even for light touches it registers no problems at all. Now comes our fun part of this, the build construction. Now before we get started, hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, consider it subscribe to the channel. I do try to upload a new video every week. Now for the build construction and build materials of this Zenbook 14X, it is made of mostly of post recycle aluminium. That's great as Zeus. You think about sustainable for the future. I absolutely love that. Now it is pretty much aluminium at the top bottom and inside as well for the palm rest is very smooth the hinge is also an aluminium as well now there is absolutely now the front of the back cover here you see is a really nice sort of subtle design it looks very professional and it's nice and subtle yet it also gives that nice slick look to it now as for just the build construction oh the bend and the twist it doesn't really twist much, that much at all yeah that's crazy here and oh it does have that much flex on the keyboard. I'm putting quite a lot of weight on this as well, so fantastic. Now, as for the hinge, I'll just do the one finger test to show you the hinge here. And normally with very good turn, it's just one finger and it's actually really smooth all the way. Same pressure all the way through, and you can see it can go up to, well, let's say 180 degrees. So that's what it is, that's nice. And you actually have the, there is two places where the actual exhaust comes out. It's just on the right hand side of the, behind the hinge that's one area and also from the left side here so I'll just spawn the left side here just beware of your uh, lefty for the mouse I know some people have complained about lefties for the mouse where it's blowing hot air this one you don't really feel it because it kind of moves that way uh, away from you so that's not an issue for most lefties here which is absolutely good to see now as I said let's just gonna do the nice little wiggle test and I can see this here is a clamping both sides just clamping it's not letting go uh, and i said it is really smooth for one finger it doesn't take that much effort to actually lift it up so aces have done an absolute fantastic job on the hinge here this is a recording from the 1080p webcam from the zenbook 14x this is the video and audio over there this is here and see what the quality webcam is like i'm currently at the cafe at the moment there's a bit of a noise there and i'm in a well lit environment and this may be something you'll be at in, in a real conference even zoom or a teams meeting and just to give you an idea of what it's been like now i do have noise cancellation at the moment turned on and i'm gonna have got a bit of background music or some people talking in the background and now i'm just gonna actually turn off the noise cancellation so you can see what it's like so this is without the noise cancellation so you can hear what the quality of the audio is like without the noise cancellation of ai and now Going to turn on the AI noise cancellation. This is with the noise AI noise cancellation turned on. Just definitely want to hear what your thoughts of this 1080p webcam. Put a comment below. I'm currently in the cafe outdoors, so, so there's quite a lot of light and a lot of background light behind me as well, just so you can actually see what the quality of the webcam is like. Now, I do have noise cancelling turned on at the moment. The Zenbook 14X comes with a 70 watt hour battery and when I tested out the battery life it managed to get 9 hours and 3 minutes for modern office battery life test and PC Mark 10, 1 hour and 42 minutes for gaming and 9 hours and 12 minutes for video playback on the Procom battery life test. Considering the laptop has a discrete graphics and also an OLED display which normally consumes more power this is actually pretty good battery life. Looking at temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurement, the ambient temperature in the room was 25 degrees Celsius. And just to give you a reference point, my hand was anyway between 35 to 36 degrees Celsius. Just so you can have an idea of how hot or how cool this laptop could be. So I took my base measure when the computer was idle and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 38 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, measure a maximum of 36 decibels. So practically silent. And the average internal core temperature was 43 degrees Celsius. 
They don't put 20% load on the computer. That's pretty much average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, surfing the web, streaming videos. And the hottest air around the keyboard measure a maximum of 44 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it did spin up to a maximum of 41 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 61 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer and the hottest air around the keyboard measure a maximum of 46 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan, it did spin up a little bit more to a maximum of 45 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 68 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest air around the keyboard measure a maximum of 48 degrees Celsius. As for the fan, it spun all the way up to a maximum of 50 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 86 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover while I had 100% load and the hottest air around the back cover surface measure in a maximum of 46 degrees Celsius. Interesting enough, most of the heat is located on the right side center of the keyboard, around about where the L key is. Let's have a look at performance of the processor over long duration tasks. Now this ZenBook 14 is configured with an i9 13900H processor. Windows reports this processor has a base clock speed of 2.6 GHz, so we want to see this at 2.6 GHz or above. Now I've got a task that's running for over 6 hours and using all the system resources, so pretty much nearly 100% load on the processor, memory and storage, and also using quite a lot of the internal and discrete graphics as well. Now I can see this processor is running anywhere ranging between 2.6 to about 3 GHz, so that is above 2.6 GHz, so we don't have thermal throttling happening at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I do have this in performance mode and also in the fan profile in the Asus software in performance mode too, to let it run it at its best. And I do have the processor temperatures anywhere between 86 to about 81 degrees Celsius. Now these processes are rated to about 100 degrees Celsius, so this is quite safe and there's still quite a lot of headroom uh, for this process to run. But Asus have actually done an absolute fantastic job on the thermal solution. Now this is a quite thin laptop still for an i9 and it still is able to run very well on the base clock speed above that. Now that's quite saying something for Asus because a lot of the i9s that I've tested in the past, they have a lot of thermal throttling happening, uh, especially for long duration tasks. Now this has been going for six hours and this is able to hold that high up. Absolute fantastic job, Asus. Look at the internals, we're gonna start off with the battery. We've got the 70 watt hour battery at the bottom and the battery connector is right here. On the left hand side here is the M.2. Slot for the storage, now it is a 22.8 format and we've got a heat shield here. I'm just gonna try and take this heat shield just so you can have a look at. And that's the storage here, so you can actually And it's just one slot. And then we've got the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module right here. And then the soldered system memory, as you can see, we've got a twin pipe system here and this one system fan, which actually sucks in the air directly down and then pushes it back out that way here. Here's the results of the benchmarks performed on the ZenBook 14X. This one's configured with the i9-13900H processor with 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD and also the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. Here's the results for Passmark 10, Passmark 11, Citibench R23, Citibench R24, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disc Mark, Geekbench 5, Geekbench 6, Geekbench ML, Rossmark, Procon Office, Procon AI, Windows ML, Procon AI, Tensor, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Puget Photoshop, Puget Lightroom, Puget Premiere Pro, Puget After Effects, Blender, Furmark, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Pref. And some gaming benchmarks like Far Cry 6, Cyberpunk 2077, Fronza 5, and F1 2023. 
the ZenBook 14X OLED. What a great overall package laptop this is. Definitely the highlight is its display with its fast and high color accuracy. Definitely up to the task for professional photo and video editing work. And it's just overall looking good and very nicely built. We definitely have some very nice speakers here. Very controlled temperatures and fair noise. A nice keyboard and trackpad. Just can't go wrong with this ZenBook 14X OLED. You should get a pretty nice price these days in 2024 as I'm making this video. And I hope you find this video informative and enjoyed it. If you did even support my channel, smash that like button for me. Share this video, it does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.